Welcome everybody to the Talk with the Top Show. My name's Alex and I'm your host. And our guest today is the former Formula One racing car driver, winner for Le Mans in 1992, and TV presenter, Mark Blundell. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm very well, Alex. Good to join you. Thank you for being on my show. So, Mark, you have an amazing career. So when and how did you know that racing car driving was going to make, make your career? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, basically started driving as a, as a young lad at uh, eight years old, sitting on cushions, driving around on private property, uh, trying to peer above the steering wheel and reach the pedals. Um, and from that, I progressed on to start in the sport of motocross on two wheels as a schoolboy. And at 17 years old, added on two more wheels and started in Formula Ford 1600, but purely as a hobby. Um, and that was in, in, what, 1984. And by 1989, I was testing a Formula One car for the first time. And in 1991, I was a Grand Prix driver. So back in those days, a very quick transition. But again, being very honest, I had no understanding whether that was going to be my career or not. It was a bit of a pipe dream. So as you mentioned, um, you, you obviously had your career in racing, which can be a, a very dangerous sport. And I know that we have accidents. So how do you prefer, prepare mentally and physically for each race, knowing the dangers? Well, I think racing drivers in general are quite disciplined in their outlook, you know, and at the end of the day, you have to take on board that nobody's there hitting you over the top of the head with a hammer or something saying you must drive a racing car. Um, it's something that we all enjoy doing and hopefully we do it to the best of our abilities. And in a kind of perverse way, the risk is actually quite exciting because it's man and machine and you're taking everything to the edge and maybe beyond. But of course, it is dangerous and there are many accidents um, and indeed, you know, uh, fatalities. And we all take those consequences on board when we get inside a car. So you can't factor it in. You have to kind of place it and understand that there is risk. But at the same time, I think all of us have got self-preservation uh, wired into us from day one. So I, I read that you, you've started racing since you were able to drive. So where does a racing driver, where do, you, where do you start your career? Like, what do you do to get going? Well, I think actually, I mean, most guys start, or girls start in karting. I mean, that's where a lot of them start. And as I said, I didn't start there. I started on two wheels um, in the mud, in motocross, scramble bikes. Uh, some of my peers, like Damon Hill, were uh, road racing. So they started on two wheels as well. But I think a good, uh, a good baseline a good platform is is carts you know go-karting i think that's a fantastic way to to start in motorsport um formula ford 1600 back in my day was the entry level i think now there's other uh, formulas that apply and of course you can start racing now with a license at the age of 14 um you know which uh, for me sounds a bit crazy but actually you know it's a very heavily congested grid these days when you see the younger generation in genetas and, and f4 so I think for anybody who wants to set out to be a racing driver, you have to make sure that you're going to have some tough skin because you're going to get told no a lot of the time and uh, have huge amount of self-belief because nine times out of 10, that's the only person who's going to make sure that you get to where you want to go is, uh, is yourself. I watched a, a video of you that, um, the, the other day that you were demonstrating some Formula One overtaking. So what would you say is the most challenging and exciting part of a race? Is it pulling off at the start with acceleration, the overtaking, or keeping control of the car at such high speeds? I can't deny that starting on the grid of an F1 race is something very special. And I think, you know, all drivers would say to you, you know, when you start on an F1 grid with all of that horsepower and all of that testosterone, <laughs> it's an exciting, exciting sort of situation. But in saying that, um, I would probably say that actually the art of overtaking, the art of slipstreaming somebody and setting them up to make a move is probably the biggest thrill. Um, but at the same time, you know, bolting on a set of qualifying tires and doing the ultimate lap. And again, because you're just putting yourself against machine and circuit and trying to extract the maximum is also an exciting thrill. So, you know, it, it, it varies, but overtaking is quite special. When you pull off a great move, I think it's quite a rewarding feeling. And uh, finally, what, what do you say are the top three attributes that a young person might need to become a successful racing driver that you were? 
Um, I think what we said earlier, I think self-belief is number one, determination. And I think, you know, what goes a long way, and sometimes people forget, please and thank you cost nothing. So whenever you meet people, understand that they're going to be the same people you meet on the way up as what they are on the way down. And uh, I think you'll find it goes a long way in whatever you do, whether it's sport, in your professional life or your personal life. So, yeah, as a young person, I pretty much say there are three things that I would sort of drill into someone. I know that you, you did um, TV presenting as well. So what, what would you say was, is the best thing about presenting on the TV? Oh, I don't know. I mean, listen, my TV career was uh, something that I didn't really plan for. I got offered the opportunity and I took it and I spent seven and a half years or so doing live television around Formula One as well as doing some other TV uh, shows as well, uh, mainly automotive, uh, along with some, some cheesy game shows when you're uh, back in the day doing my Formula One stuff. <laughs> but, um, it was a lot of fun, very, uh, very exciting doing live TV, but at the same time, when you say something, it's gone. You can't retrieve it. And, you know, I'm probably not one of the most polished guys in the world. Um, so I would probably be the, uh, the guy that the... Uh, the taxi driver would relate to if you got in the back of a black cab in London um, because that's the kind of uh, things that I sort of express myself in is in layman terms so you know um, there's far better people than me that do television and of course my ex-teammate and business partner and great friend Martin Brundle who um, similar sounding name to me but uh, he's a bit older there you go so uh, th thank you Mark I've really enjoyed this you've You've got a, a great story. I'm sure any young racing driver will be inspired by you. So uh, thank you. You've been great.